Todd Schroeder of Databricks, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. What are agencies doing, uh, the ones that are doing it effectively, as they're implementing artificial intelligence tools and using it on the data that they have in-house? I think um, it's a great question. And, and to your point, I think there is a, uh, there's a spectrum of maturity out there. Um, some of which is policy predicated and some of it's just innovation and mission kind of predicated as well. But <clears throat> those that are uh, doing it well are, are going, I would say. First and foremost, you know, change requires a sense of urgency. Um, those leaders that are making these decisions more and more are not technical leaders. They're business leaders that are looking to harvest new types of results um, or mission impacts looking to drive new types of efficiencies that they just know they can't get to with traditional methods. And so, you know, speed and, and action of bias or that, that imperative for change is, is, is paramount. And those that are doing it and making progress are, are, are behaving as such. Um, I think the other thing that, that is really important is they don't look at it as acquisition of silver bullets and new technologies that are going to solve the answers or give them the answers to the questions they don't know how to ask. They're going back to the information. And I can't help but acknowledge where we started this journey from Clinger Cohen days mm -hmm. of, you know, information is really important to the delivery of government service. And over the life cycle, we've seen a decade plus spent on cloud sprawl and software and a lot of things that have actually dismantled access to enterprise and insights. They're spread in silos and islands of information. They're not coalesced or understood together. It takes an incredible mind and a lot of uh, tribal knowledge or historical experience in these agencies to really understand how it all works together. But those leaders that are making advancements in AI are going back to demanding enterprise views of the information on, on how their missions or programs are performing, how their functions and their operations are performing, and therein the insights and the patterns or the use cases are starting to come out on um, where I, AI can, can improve outcomes, uh, deliver more automated or more efficient means of delivering those programs to constituents, um, or perhaps, you know, modeling the types of decision sets that this environment is being forced to model. What if something happens? You really can't do that unless you have your data organized in open formats and available to analyze and run AI models at scale effectively. Yeah, you mentioned business leaders are involved in a lot of these conversations. I imagine that's really helpful to stay out of the trap of, we should get some AI and then figure out what to do with it. Is that, am I on the right track there? I believe so. And you know, their um, priority alignment has always been a challenge in this organ in, in these organizations. Highly federated, budgets get appropriated to different parts and, and aligning those priorities and decisions in perfect moments in time where we've done it the right way is, is I empathize with any CIO in, in the federal government in that regard. Business leaders help that. Right? They orient the decision, the most important things that need to be figured out or found out. And because of that, you know, in so many ways, we're actually asking for less technology. We see that certainly coming out of the administration. But there's, there's a you know, kind of dual action improvements that come from that. Less software means less complexity. Less software means less silos of information. It improves our chances of seeing the enterprise and all the data therein. Um, it obviously improves our cost profile and ability to service. I think the end result there is getting to a, a structure and an architecture that's, that gives agility back to government. Right? It's too hard to keep up with societal demands if the answer is always more technology, new systems, new data sets. We have to get back to really good data, really good AI models that deliver mission performance um, and the outcomes we desire, and the measurability of how we're doing that. That's how agility comes back in. And I think those business leaders are really orienting to that. The administration is certainly orienting to that. 
And I think, you know, we are seeing results of that and we'll continue to see results of that. You mentioned uh, the concept of going quickly. A lot of people talking about that in this area. Is there such a thing as going too fast? You know, I, I, I really agree with the fail fast uh -huh. mentality, you know, and that's, you can, you can scare yourself out of making any action. Um, but you do have to have some amount of confidence in who you're partnering with. What are the known unknowns and are those unknowns mitigated? Have we thought about those things? But they, they, they shouldn't hold you from moving quickly. AI is, is a different animal than software development life cycles, right? We think in, in the past in waterfall, then we got agile as low code platforms came on the scene. AI iterates in days and weeks. It doesn't even take four week, two month sprints. Um, and if you don't iterate fast, you don't get the accuracy in the model to then have the confidence to deploy it into production and gain the benefits. And so it's a mind, it's, a, it's another sort of cerebral shift mentally of waterfall to agile, agile to like accelerated agile in the model space. The platforms themselves, the, the partners we're relying on, government to, to industry, those are the things that we, I think need to be thoughtful. Can I iterate and fail fast? And in doing so, am I still protected? Is my data still governed? Am I gonna make mistakes? Do I have the lineage of all of the data so that I know and can back up decisions I'm making and how I made them in this world of AI? And so. Can you move too fast on just throwing a new technology at it? Yes, you can. Should you move really fast on AI development, but make really sound partnership decisions so that fail fast doesn't mean mission failure? That to me is the answer. It's great to have you here, Todd. Thanks for joining me today. Always a pleasure. Thank you.